My guest is Dennis Bussell. Dennis is a Tai Chi instructor, among other things. So we're going to be doing some demonstration, but first of all, I want to introduce you and to say welcome to Dennis. Hi. Well, thank you, Ruth. What style of Tai Chi is this that you're showing us? This is Ting family style okay. of Tai Chi. What you'll find is some of the styles in the different families of Tai Chi, when someone says what style of Tai Chi do you take, it means they, they also mean family because it was a very family-oriented thing. So the families were the people who practiced the certain styles. Every family had a different style of Tai Chi. It's what their grandmothers were practicing or their grandfathers were practicing. So this is a t from the Ting family. <clears throat> what I try to share with people is exactly what was given to me. And what was given to me were, were these exercises, were the Qi Kung exercises and the, and the pressure points. I guess the benefit uh, of the differences here was I was taught by a family. So we were in their home, we were outside in their backyard, uh, I ate dinner with them. They pretty much adopted me as a young kid because they saw how my family life was and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't the best in the world. So uh, I was kind of adopted by that and they taught me, I got, I got to sit in at the table and listen and uh, although I didn't understand half of what I was listening to. And so there's yang, yang style, there's Chin style, there's Wu style. This is pretty close to the Wu style. It's, it's from the Ting family. Please uh, take the floor okay. and, and we'll get started, Dennis. Thank you. And be, feel free to talk and explain what you're doing. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first thing I would like to do is demonstrate some of the, uh, what we call Qi Kung exercises. And Tai Chi originated uh, from not, there weren't much walking patterns. They were standing still exercises. So first thing we do is relax our neck. We're doing neck rotations. If you cannot do the full neck rotations, then you just go front and back and side to side. When you do neck rotations, make sure you do both directions. And then we do some shoulder exercises where the hands again are relaxed and we're just moving from the shoulders. Some people try to do like this. You want to just relax and move from the shoulders. Okay. Go both directions. And the hands here, relaxing the elbows on you, stretching the hands. Side to side. Bring them out to the front, stretching side to side. And up and down. This is also known as a fish movement in Tai Chi is to eventually be able to loosen up at the joints and move like a fish body, fish fin, through the water here and here. But we're stretching first here and then turn and stretch here. Okay? Then up, pushing side to side. Here, up and stretch it. Very good. So what I'd like to do is just kind of show you here some exercises of what to do at home to kind of loosen up the hips. Everything here is called relaxation. So the movements, that's what attracts people to Tai Chi, I think, is because of the relaxation and movement and your body cries out for a time of relaxation over a time of stress. Okay, so these are just loosening up the hips and the knees. And you're bending your knee, right? One yes, at a always, time. right. You, you're shifting the weight and bending the knees. Never really have a locked out knee. Another good exercise to do is to put the feet together and the knees together and rotate them. We do this periodically in between the classes that I teach because uh, your knees take quite a, quite a beating and so you always need to go and relax them. Okay. But here I want to also talk to you about breathing because we're, we've been breathing wrong for a long time here. What we want to do is start learning to breathe from the tummy. Okay. 
So what we do is grab a hold of the, of the, uh, of your tummy, spread the fingers out, and what we're going to do is touch the belly while we're doing this. So when we inhale, we have to inhale through the nose. And this, and I try to tell people to pretend that there's a balloon in your, in your tummy here. So when you inhale through the nose, it inflates the balloon. So you're dropping the air, sinking the air into your dantian or your tummy here. As you exhale, you take your fingers and push all the air back out. So you inhale in, exhale out. Inhale in, exhale out. So this way your, your stomach gets to move. All your internal organs are down here and they need to move again. And so a lot of our systems of our bladder and our gallbladder and our large intestine starts breaking down because we're not moving in here anymore. Our breathing is constricted into the chest and we find ourselves breathing from the chest. That's the reason when people say take 10 deep breaths before you uh, lose your temper or something, our best 10 deep breaths are, are equal to one of the correct way. So what we have to do is start to learn how to breathe from the tummy again. If you have any questions about this and you have children run around your house, run over and grab one and lift up their shirt and you'll be able to see that they breathe from the tummy. This is why they can handle emergency situations better than adults. It's because they are already breathing from the tummy and uh, this is correct breathing and that supplies the brain with correct amount of oxygen. So again, we have to go back to the breathing. And if you can keep the breathing and the tummy moving, you'll always be able to figure out a way out of the situation. And the first movement we do is called White Crane Stretches Its Wings. It's a massaging um, from the uh, from the ridges of the hand and you're massaging the psoas area across the hips. This is where your sciatic nerve comes across. So when we talk about leg cramps, um, uh, you can get rid of a lot of leg cramps and hip joint pain from massaging. When I ask a group of elderly people how, when's the last time they did this, and some of them say never, and they're 90 years old, that means it's been 90 years and you have never massaged this part of your joints, of your legs. That's kind of sad when you think about that. Okay, so this is the idea. This is the stretching, pulling back, and then stretching forward. So it's all shoulder movement. We are pulling the elbows back, and then touching the shoulders here. Mm -hmm. so we're... Plus massaging the hands. This is called an ox tongue, by the way, and you're tucking your thumb here, and you're using both ridges of the hand for the massaging. It's to get energy flow and blood flow through the legs while we're standing. Then you slowly leave the surface going to eagle attacks its prey is the name of this movement when it gets up to shoulder level. You have to make sure that you bend at the elbows and, and relax the joints. We're moving from the joints, not from a stiff arm. By the way, the movements are inhaling and exhaling, so they're supposed to match our, uh, our breathing. It doesn't have to be that way, but when you inhale, you inhale back, exhale forward. So the idea is that you're breathing controls your movement. So if we're breathing fast, we'll move fast. If we breathe nice and slow, we'll move slow. So this is how you lower your blood pressure and lower your heart rate and move relaxingly and your joints get worked and your, uh, your arms get worked. Here, this is not as, some people say, well, I would take Tai Chi, but it doesn't look like it's much of an exercise. They're <laughs> quite wrong. Okay, this is Eagle Taxes Prey. Big Bear swims in the water. Go to Big Bear swims in the water. This is your opposite moving, pulling backwards here. Here. It's like the breaststroke. Pulling back, pushing forward. Inhale back, exhale forward. The movement should be slow enough that they match your breathing. So inhale up, pushing, exhale, inhale, exhale. Keeping the knees slightly bent. Up. Push and pull. So eagle attacks his prey, big bear swims in the water. These are all Qi Kung exercises. Qi meaning energy, Kung meaning the study of that energy. So we are studying energy flow when we're doing Tai Chi. So we reverse them back and forth here to get the different movements here. Okay.
every part of your body, from your toes all the way out to your fingertips. It gives you a good stretch. The first step, before you do anything else, is to revisit the shifting. When I shift my body weight from one leg to the other, I don't want to raise up in the middle and then come back down on the leg, raise up and come down. Pretend there's sand, and I'm taking the sand that's going to flow over to the other leg. Sand shifts and settles on this leg, and it moves and settles on the other leg. Revisit your breathing. Inhale. Exhale. So there's five exercises in the second set. Fire and water living together. Passing heaven and earth. Golden rooster stretches its wings. Looking at the moon. Waving hands in the clouds. Again, relaxing from the elbows from the side. It would look like this, that your elbows do not stray away from your body like this. That's very stiff. This is relaxing here. Okay? Up and down, inhaling up, exhaling down. This is water. This is fire. Then we're going to golden rooster stretches its wings. One hand drops here, one hand folds here. I shift up on this leg and turn and bend. Pushing up with one hand, pushing down with the other. Now swoop up here, turn back around to the front. While you're watching this, try to watch the feet at one time and get what's happening with the feet and then add the hands. It's very confusing. So take a little bit at a time. Here, here, here. With the, the feet are just doing what's called a pivot here. If you, if you want to do this at home, this is a great exercise to strengthen up your knees and your ankles, which are what gives out on you when you're walking and you fall. It's because we're not strengthening up our knees and our ankles. So the last time my foot was like this was when I was falling, right? So what we do now is learn to loosen these up and strengthen them up. It's coming from the shifting of the weight of the body, okay? I'll show you a couple more good Qigong exercises, and then I'd like to do the form for you. Living Buddha holds up the heavens. We inhale, crossing the arms. We come up and exhale, stretching. Bend the knees, bend the arms. Just a nice, good morning stretch. Crossing the arms here, inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling. What these movements do is help us to uh, control our breathing so that we can control our movements. One does uh, control the other. And push. And then you relax completely, you inhale up, stretch up, and push, exhaling. Let your exhale last the whole movement. So when you're all the way down here, then you relax and ready for inhale. Exhale. Living Buddha holds up the heavens. Inhale, exhale. You can do the same thing setting down. Inhale, and exhale. Another good, uh, good back exercise is called short iron bridge. Short iron bridge, I'm turning from the side here so that you can see what loosens up first. The first thing that moves is the knees bend. And then I push out the pelvis a little bit, bending, and I relax the shoulders and I look straight up. So if you don't bend back like that, you're dropping straight here and look up. It's a great exercise for the back. Then you go forward, just relaxing, going side to side. And then come back up, bend the knees, push out the hip, Drop the shoulders, look straight up. Again, don't try to go back like that. that that'll hurt your back. Right there. Okay, very good. Um, when we were talking about short iron bridge here and then going forward here and relaxing side to side, there's another exercise that works well with this. It's called Golden Rooster Pecks at His Food. Once you have stretched down here, relax, and you come back up, turn one foot to the side, bending, the back leg so that it's like an L stance. One foot's pointing here, 
one foot's pointing here. If you slid back, your heel should come back to your heel, okay? Now this movement, now you straighten the front leg out and you push out at the old gluteus maximus here. You're pushing out from here and you stretch forward here, not from the head like this, but from the chest so that you're just relaxing down here. You may not be able to go to much extreme here, but you're bending the back leg, straightening the front leg, and just relaxing down. Your goal is to bend down and stretch. So it's not your head here that's pulling forward, as opposed to your body here. So you're trying to stretch your chest to your knees, and then the chin. But please don't hurt, don't try to do that unless you're really loosened up. I've been doing this for a couple of years. 20, so it takes a little while to get here. This is a stretching side to side. Here, inhaling up, exhaling down. Up, down. All the movements have inhaling, exhaling. Searching for fish in the dark water. This movement, the elbows touch the sides and your hands are out a little ways away from the body so that the wrist can move. It goes both directions. If you're sitting in a chair, you can put your hands on the armchair and just move. The idea of touching your elbows is so that your hands, your arms cannot help you here. So you're moving just the wrist, nice and slow. The movements of the legs go up and down and side to side. Nice and easy, searching for fish in the dark water. The idea of this is to learn the squatting and that you could get your squatting down to where you could just squat like this and work the hips. But if you cannot get up to that, work your way up there. Here and here. Searching for fish in the dark water. Big Bear Hugs the Moon is a Chi Kung movement. This movement, you have to, you can do it from a horse stance like this, or you can do it from a, from movement number one, position number one. The back foot is at an angle so that it can support my, my weight. If my back foot is straight and I try to stand on one leg, you wobble because there's not much stability there. So you turn the foot at an angle, then bring this leg around so that you're still shoulder width apart, drop your hands and you should be able to feel your legs here. If you're like this, that's too close, you're gonna fall over. So you keep enough room here that you could roll something in between your feet. Then you come up and make a circle with the hands, a nice big round moon and palms facing out. The idea of this movement is to just hold this movement for as long as you can. And you just, you can close your eyes and work uh, your balance. You can come up to lifting up on one leg holding and then work closing your eyes and lifting up on one leg holding. So all this is the different levels of balance. And believe me, if I can do this, anybody can do this. Okay, and relaxing. Let me show you a real quick thing about walking. Usually in walking, we walk like this, and this looks like a pretty normal walk to most people, but the problem is, is we'll trip over our own toe or that little sidewalk that's, that sticks up this high. The thing that we are doing there is moving from the feet and we're not supposed to move from there. We're supposed to move from the knee because if I do not move my knees now, I cannot move. So my knees have to be the first thing to move. So I'm supposed to bend the knee first and lift up, sit down on the heel and roll out at angles. My feet are straight because I'm stressed out all the time. So that takes stress. If you try this at home and lay down on your bed, when you lay down and relax on your bed, your feet are not straight up they are like this because mm -hmm. that's relaxation so that's how my feet should be also in this walking because all of us stand on one foot and when we get right here this is the danger place this is where you fall because your your ankles cannot hold your weight on a straight foot we ha we are breaking laws of physics here so you have to turn this foot at an angle now i can stand on one leg and do these these things because uh, this foot's in its proper position if my foot is straight, then I have too much, see all that wobbling in the foot now because there, there's no stability there. So in Chinese walking, this is how the walking should be. It's very soft as opposed to fast-paced walking makes you sit down very hard. So when you walk fast, 
it, everything sets down hard and it jerks and it jerks the whole system. If Tai Chi taught me anything, it says slow down and your accidents will, will be much less. So the idea of walking here now comes from bending the knees and sitting down from the heel and rolling out to the toe. Okay, so that's the Tai Chi walking. Now people say it looks kind of goofy. You can, uh, you can mellow this down and it can be, you always have to concentrate and catch yourself to walk the right way. But I hope we get past the thing of what people think. Freedom discovers you the minute you quit worrying about the impression you're about to make. The introduction of the first form are the four direction movements and the four walking patterns in those. So this is the first form. The first form consists of the correct way of walking back and forth and shifting the weight. And it goes in four directions, north, south, east, and west. Uh, in Native American sense, I've always, I brought that tradition also in, into, into this, and it seems like two friends meeting on, the, meeting on a road. Uh, and so what I do is usually start my form off uh, facing the east if it's in the morning uh, for the place of beginnings. So this is the first form and how it works. Movement number one comes up to here. It's facing this way. It's four movements in four directions. So it's the same four movements in four directions. That four, then you turn, shifting your weight, you turn the other direction now, and you come up to number one, two, three, and four. Then you turn this half direction. One, two, three, four. Then you turn this direction. One, two, three, four. Very important for the feet to be in the right place. And what I mean by this, and we relax here and turn here and turn here. Okay, so here's what happens is we learn the shifting of our weight, emptying and filling, and to shift side to side. So I shift over here and the toe comes up, and I turn the foot at an angle so that I can balance on one leg. But you don't have to do this at first. You can do it nice and easy, shifting here and slide the foot along the surface and work your way up to sometime being able to do that. So here's how it goes. We go here, we slide up to movement number one. Movement number two, the knee turns out so that I can step at an angle, roll out to the toe. Movement number three, as I straighten this leg out, I bend this leg. Movement number four, I come a little bit further on my knee past my toe. Now I turn around, so I come back here, I come up on the toe and shift to here and bend the knee. So you're sitting pigeon toe here, bending the knee. Then I shift my weight over here with this toe coming up. So if you ever wanted to stop and learn the shifting of the weight, this is how you can do this. You're sinking down and up, down and up. Okay? So you shift over here and turn around this direction now. Make sure the foot's at an angle. Slide around. Always hang it a circle. Half circles here, not here. So you come to here, movement number two, number three, number four. Now I switch. So far my left foot has been doing the same thing, but now I'm going to switch to the right foot. Your left leg is forward. Your left leg was the forward leg on the other side. Yin and yang now apply here. So now the whole exercise is going to switch and your right leg is going to be your lead leg for two directions. So what happens is this toe comes up and it just turns one quarter right there and it sets down. And you shift your knee to catch up to your toe and lift your heel up and just turn and pivot. And now you're facing those trees right in movement number one. So on the turning, you'll come here, turn at a half turn and come to here. And then you'll step out with the right foot, okay? And then the left. Now the hands. 
This is what the hands do without stepping anywhere. I'll show you what the hands do. Movement number one, the left hand paints a half a circle in front of your body, right like this. It goes from here to here. Then it completes the circle. Movement number two completes the circle with a relaxed wrist here. Bent wrist. Looks like this on the side. Nice and relaxing. Elbow pointing down, not out. Movement number three, the palm turns up and splashes air on you. Movement number four pushes right at your shoulder level. Okay, that's what the left hand does with the left foot. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're learning this in sections. So we learn one, stop, two, stop, three, stop, four, stop. But once we get this down, we want a continual movement. So this is what it looks like from a continual movement. Here, here. So see this whole circle that's being painted here? Here to here. Pull back, push. Here, here, back, foot. That's one hand. The other hand now. This is what the other hand does on the other side. You would do brush knee, lift the elbow back so the hand is coming straight up to here. Push. That's number two. Number three. Number four. Number one. Two. It's just like a swing here and here. One. Two, three, four. Now let's do them all. Ready? Movement number one, pack salve, brush knee. Movement number two, hook wrist, push. Movement number three, both hands come back. Movement number four, both hands push forward. Again, one, two, three, Four. Then as I switch to my right leg lifting up, I switch to the right hand. Right hand comes up, left hand brushes. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Here we go. Inhaling here, exhaling here. If you can do this, that's fine. If you cannot do this, just step out to the side. Because this is not part of your form. It's just an exercise to get you to your natural shoulder width apart. If your feet are together and you move your toes out and bend the knees and your heels are together, then you bring the, the heels up and turn them out straight and sit down. This puts you in your natural shoulder width apart place so that you're not way out here or too close. This is not shoulder width apart. This will make you wobble. Okay, here we go. Movement number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Now I turn completely around. I sink everything right here so that we're all moving together right here. The hands and the feet match each other. So you're like a puppet. When this hand moves, this foot should move. Here, here. Now this is where I shift over to my right foot now. My right foot comes up. The hands and the feet match each other. One, two, three, four, Turn all the way around, sink, turn, one, two, three, four. You're done with the form, float the hands down, then completely relax them, turn straight here, shift your weight, turn straight here, and step up, you'll be done with the form. Okay, we're going to wrap up with uh, Dennis Bussell talking about Tai Chi and the general um, uh, theory, I guess, is the way to explain it, Dennis. So, uh, the breathing, all of those things. So, uh, we've got a few minutes. Please okay. go ahead. Well, what we try to do is think of the Tai Chi and the Qi Kung 
practice as a battle as a, as a battle against aging and sickness and so your mind and your breathing and your spirit are three different uh, correlations three different entities in the body and the mind is the would be considered the general and the chi would be considered the soldiers uh, and then the spirit is the morale of the general and the soldiers so once and the, the mind always wants to know what's going on so in order to to win the battle uh, you have to know the battlefield which is the body and uh, and be able to correlate all this kind of some of the pamphlets that I hand out for some of my students uh, explain a little bit about this but what I would like to just throw at you a minute is some ideas about our energies and how they affect us oh that's the okay <laughs> so um, let's just say that uh, when our, our chi level or our energy level um, is um, it's correlated with Let's give you a good example. When you're sad, here's a good way to tell if somebody's sad or frustrated, right? Now, what was that? So that let me know that my inhale was longer than my exhale. So according to that, my body is balancing out my emotion. My body feels the emotion, so my breathing correlates with that emotion. If I cry, and all of us do this, when we cry and we have a good cry, we go... <sighs> like that so our inhales are very short and graspy and our exhales are long so our body again is balancing out if we ever took note of how we're how the body's reacting to the emotion we could figure this thing out the opposite now is true with laughing when we laugh our exhales are longer and our inhales are shorter so we would we would ha 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 <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. So now our exhales are short and our inhales are long, exhales short. And so it's, it turns, according to our emotions, is according to, um, to our chi level. Our breathing is very closely related to that. Um, uh, so when you're sad, the body is more yin and you inhale more. And when you're happy, uh, the body is more yang. So it's always balancing out. The body is always trying to balance out breathing according to the emotion. If you wake up in the morning and it's cloudy and it's raining, that already sets the stage for your emotions. And you have to right then decide that you want to regulate and change that. Okay. So, and if it's happening in the springtime and the sun shining, your body energy is higher. So we are very much uh, opposed to we are in balance with our the things that are around us they okay. do affect us well dennis i want to thank you so much thank you, and uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime Good. and Good. En enhance on this and and teach our viewers more uh thank you very very much well, dennis you. bussell uh tai chi instructor and native american instructor yeah, i hope you enjoy this tape there's a lot of stuff on it the best thing i can tell you to do in the instruction of using it over and over again is to cut it up into sections. Use your lower body, don't worry about the hands, just follow along with what the feet are doing on the tape. And then kind of cut your television screen in half and work just learning the lower part. And then the second half work the upper parts. So it, just take your time and don't get frustrated in trying to, it's a lot of stuff to learn, a lot of different movements, a lot of things going on there that you, it's hard to catch on a videotape. I want to say thanks to everybody involved in, taping this for me and uh, thanks for your time and your hard work and hope you enjoyed this tape. Thank you. <laughs>